Welcome to Junk Journal Snacks. So today I'm going to work in my newest planner. If you've missed the video where I made a second planner because the other one was just too much of a gator mouth for me to handle, please check my recent video below. So I've been working with my Make It Called Paris Tea Party in here. And I've already included all of the like basics so i've glued down all of the weeks and i've added all of my notes here you can find all of these digitals linked below if you're interested but what we're going to do today you can do with anything you want so this is the signature i've allocated for may and i thought why don't i try to do something with this double spread I don't really have any plans for this yet specifically. I do want to continue on my path to add some ephemera and some things that I have. This box, as you can see, is just bursting with stuff. So I want to kind of make a collage using at least some of these items. The way I usually start on a page, especially when I don't know what it's going to look like in the end, like now, I always start from the outside working myself in and somehow it just kind of gets a life of its own and there will be a point where I know what it needs. At the moment, I have no idea what it needs because it's just an empty double page, although it's really nice to already have something on here, but it's not necessary. You can do this with just a blank page. And I'm thinking, because this is very loud, right? This is like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and I want to tone that down a little bit. So I thought I would just use this Tim Holtz stencil it is the number th i can't tell if there's an i there or not but then the number is so 58 in case you're looking for this i'm going to probably just dry brush some gesso and i'm expecting that what comes out will be a little bit blue because i do have some blue distress oxide on my stencil this is the beloved speckled egg and this will definitely come off if i add the gesso i'm going to use my stippling brush for this but you could also use a sponge just be sure that in either case no matter what you use you don't put too much paint or gesso through the stencil because that will just make blotches so i want it to be relatively dry and i especially am going over those parts that are a bit darker because those are the ones i want to tone down a little bit and you can see here that it's slightly blue. I don't know if that did much for toning it down, but it did add some more interest, at least. <laughs> By the way, if you want to know how I made this background here, all you do is you take a piece of copy paper and you put, for example, the bottom of a cup or a lid. In this case, that was a little plastic lid. You dip it into your coffee and you literally just put it on your page. That's all. Gives a really nice effect, as you can see. So next, I'm going to choose some random items that I think I can use. I think I'm going to stick to neutral tones. That's what I enjoy. That's what I have a lot of. A lot of these ephemera pieces are from your creative studio. I used to do those unboxings once a month on my channel. You can find a playlist of that on my channel as well if you're interested. I think that's plenty. And now I'll first take away those pieces that I want more at the top. And I will just start, as I said, going from the outside in and, um, and just try to have some layering going on here. I'll turn this upside down. Maybe I want a torn edge. And I'm just going to start building up 
some layers here. Actually, I'm going to be brave and glue them down immediately. Mostly just because it's a bit more of a challenge when you don't have the layout and then, you know, you can still move the pieces around. I enjoy the challenge of just going for it and then I don't have to worry about in the end. I, I really don't like it when I have like a million la layers and then I have to glue it all down. That's no fun. So I'd rather do it like this as I go along. I'm just going to layer them so that they overlap each other. Let's start from this side as well. I have no idea what my focal point is going to be yet. I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to stress about it. I think it helps with the overall composition to do similar things on each side. So already having these neutral colors makes it seem very cohesive but also just building it kind of in a similar way from both sides will add to that effect as well. And if you're a beginner in collaging, I would just say choose a color palette or stick to neutrals if you enjoy those and just start gluing stuff down. And it might be that you're going to realize what you did is horrible, but you, then you can analyze it and you can see what was it that I didn't like? What is not working? Is it not balanced? Is it the color scheme? And then you go from there and next time maybe you'll do something differently and you'll see if that worked. You can watch a thousand videos and hear so many explanations on, you know, what is the right way to collage. But until you do it yourself, you're not going to figure it out. This is a sticker. Yes. I don't trust it, so I'm going to stick glue on it anyway. You know, it's like it's like making a junk journal. You can watch so many tutorials, but unless you make your first junk journal, you have no idea. I guess making junk journals is a bit easier because you can just watch a tutorial and uh, learn the techniques. But with collaging, a lot of it is very intuitive. I think this is a sticker as well. So since each collage is different, it's of course a lot harder to just give you a tutorial and say this is how all collages work because that's not going to happen. But there are some basic rules, of course, whoops, that you can follow that will help. Why would I put some of these items upside down? Because I don't want the focus to be on what is written on the label, but more the shape, the colors, the design. Don't be afraid to tear ephemera up. They might just look a lot more cool that way. So you see, I'm just kind of overlapping shapes and I'm sticking to similar shapes on each side. So I put one there, I'm going to put the other part on the right side. See, I don't want to put them like the same way. That's boring. So I'll turn this one. But I think the best way to learn how to do good collages is just practice them. Do them over and over and over and start simple with a few pieces, little color, and just keep doing them. Okay, I'm, I'm liking where this is going. Now I want to think more about more decorative pieces that I really want showing more. So those are the ones I want on top. Like I think I want some of this here on both sides. And I don't want to place it exactly on the same spot. I want to create more interest by putting it somewhere else. So I'm putting it down here. But I want to extend it more. So I'll add that on top. And then I want to add the butterfly wings. The great thing about using neutral colors is that you cannot go wrong. Whatever you will put down will work with anything else. So that's maybe a good place to start. So again, I don't want to put them on the same level. I think that would look boring. So I'd rather put it up here. So that feels really good already. I've used some of my ephemera and I really like how this looks. I don't think I want to add that much more actually. I do want to have some of this background showing. So I don't know if I need more of a focal point to be honest. I'm going to add some more of this stenciling which is now going to be white because I have washed this in the meantime. I'm going to put that over here randomly but not on the butterfly. I want the butterfly to stand out more which is why I want to push the other ephemera a bit more into the background. 
Mm, this is very runny and my brush is not completely dry. So this is not working out like I want it to. Okay, I've dried everything off. Let's see if this works a little better now on this side. Mm, marginally better. <laughs> I'll try to go over these. Not much better. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to dry this and then maybe go over it again. Okay, I decided I'm going to pull in the big the, well, <laughs> the big guns. This is not working like I wanted to, so I'm going to add some texture paste. I have recently bought some very fine grained sand from a shop that we have, which is called Depot. It's a German chain. And I'm going to mix this into my gesso. Now I need more gesso. Okay, now I need more sand. <laughs> How long can we keep going back and forth? <laughs> oh, this looks like it has a beautiful texture now. Mmm, love the sound as well. Very grainy. So let's try to put this exactly over the others. That's more like it. Yes, much better. So let's do that on the other side as well. Once this has dried, I now decided that I want a little more grunginess on this page. And I'm going to try to add that with my watercolors. I'm going to try this color, which is like this rusty brown orange color i think that might look pretty cool i'm going to dab it here and then i'll add some water and just let that run a little bit i don't want it to go crazy i really just want a touch of color and i'll do the same thing on the other side I actually want a little more on this side. You see, I love how it is here. I want a little more of that here. I think that'll do. And then I want a quote. And the quote I want says, take these broken wings and fly. And I'm going to type this with my vintage typewriter. I got this from my sister-in-law's son. Maybe you can find some on eBay. I don't know how easy these are to find. Of course, you can also stamp it. Or if you have a label maker, label maker, label maker, you can do that as well. Or handwrite it. That's probably the easiest. Just handwrite it. But I don't like my handwriting. So I'm going to type this. And by the way, some of you have commented when you saw me use this last, when I was looking for the hashtag, there is no hashtag here. Some of you thought it would be on top of the three, but I have an equal sign here. There is no hashtag sign here. I, I then made it in pencil for that one page. <laughs> by the way, look how cool this turned out. I let this air dry. Really looks like the rusty hinge from the Distress Oxide. So there's a lot you can do with watercolors. You don't necessarily need the Distress Oxides. I'm going to ink around this with my Walnut Stain. When I was looking for a vintage typewriter, I considered getting the one, there's a really cute one from We Are Memory Keepers. And it's very expensive actually. But I read some reviews and they have really bad reviews for that typewriter. I don't know if it's even still available. If any of you have it, can you let me know if you're happy with it? I would love to know your opinion on that. I think they, they had it in such cool colors. Like it was like a really nice, like I think they have one even like this or is it a little more teal? I'm not sure. They have pink and they have a couple of colors. So I have two strips here. I think I'm going to leave it at two and not break it down further.
Finding the right position for these is not so easy because, of course, they are parts of the collage. They are not separate from the collage. So we really have to see how do these darker bits work with the rest of the darker bits to make it work. Can't just slap them down anywhere. I know I wouldn't be happy with that. I do like the idea of having one on one side and the rest of the sentence on the other side. This needs to be up here. That one I'm sure of. This one, not so much. <laughs> this one is kind of long. I'm, I'm wondering if I should tear that in two. I keep coming back to this position because there's this indent here and it just kind of fits so nicely in there. Okay, this is somehow just not working for me. So I think what I need to do is to add something else that's a little darker than what I have going on here. Going to add some smaller numbers from the Stampers Anonymous Field Note set, CMS396. A lot of number variations here. I have these linked down for you. And I will do this in black. I'll add my writing board underneath so I have a flatter surface. Let's do one on the wing. And I'll add a vertical one on this wing. This is already way into the stage where the project is telling me what it needs. So when I saw that these aren't working out, I knew I needed more contrast. It sounds weird, but to kind of distract from these because they were just too much in my face. I don't know. <laughs> and I'll add another number up here, kind of extending again that collage. And I'll add another vertical one here. Then I'll add another big one down here, but just the partial number. And I'll add a third one here as well. I think this one is too long as well. Let me tear that in two. Yep, now it works for me. I think the reason why I like this better is because none of these now are sticking out so much into this more calm area. It's more part of this part here where I added the ephemera and I still have all this calm part here for my eye to rest. And the last thing I want to do to wake this whole collage up a little bit, to make it come to life a, a little bit more, is to add some black splatters especially here in these areas. I want to keep most of the calmer area calm. So I have this mixture here, which is mostly black watercolor. And if you're wondering how I came up with that quote, since we had these half wings, I decided to Google for quotes with broken wings and that was a part of a longer quote but i just like that first sentence for this page thanks so much for watching love you guys Mwah! Mwah! <laughs>